the qualities that a middle-level teacher should possess. A middle-level teacher should possess three qualities. Explanation Geshe Potowa said, The threefold training of discipline, concentration and wisdom, together with compassion and a thorough understanding of reality, are the five essential qualities. He omitted a few of the ten qualities. It is not necessary to have extensive knowledge of the scriptures, but it is essential to have compassion and a thorough understanding of reality. My teacher, Shang Tsun, does not have extensive knowledge of the scriptures, nor can he withstand dispiriting circumstances or express gratitude. He did not have extensive knowledge, nor could he endure hardships. However, he had at least practiced and realized the threefold training of discipline, concentration and wisdom. He might lack skillful means. However, since he possesses these five qualities, he can benefit whoever approaches him. He possessed these five qualities. Thus, he could benefit others. He had the threefold training of discipline, concentration and wisdom as well as compassion and a thorough understanding of reality. That is enough. These are the five essential qualities. If a teacher is slightly lacking or not so perfect in other qualities, it doesn't matter. Such a teacher can benefit their students. Moreover, Nien Don is not skillful in speech. It means that he lacked the skillful means and eloquence to teach the Dharma. Even when he dedicates merits for the benefactors after receiving their offerings, the listeners can only think, no one understands what he is saying. His words might be hard to understand, so nobody knew what he was saying. However, because he has these five qualities, he can benefit whoever approaches him. He might not be good at teaching the Dharma, but he possessed the threefold training of discipline, concentration and wisdom. He had deep concentration and had attained wisdom through realization. Perhaps he had not extensively studied the scriptures, but he strictly observed the precepts. He not only had the wisdom of listening, but also the wisdom of realization. Some individuals may not have extensively studied the scriptures, but they have directly realized the teachings through the instructions of their gurus. They have compassion. Since they may not have extensive knowledge, they lack skillful means and eloquence. However, whoever has faith and learns from them can receive great benefits. This is because realization is the most crucial. When seeking to follow a spiritual teacher, the most essential aspect to consider is their level of realization. Not to mention the realization of reality, at the very least, the teacher should thoroughly understand the teachings and have compassion. If you are not compassionate to others, once someone criticizes you a little, you might dislike them and seek revenge. Some individuals, even if they are slightly criticized or mocked by others, will seek revenge. If someone mocks them or comments on their virtue, they may retaliate by saying, your virtue is not great either. They tend to repay evil with evil. Such individuals are terrible in spiritual practice and lack compassion. We should have a sense of shame. As practitioners, 
if someone slanders us or looks down upon us, especially if a fellow practitioner looks down upon you or even points out your faults. As monastics, we may not directly point out the faults of others. However, if someone disrespects you and acts arrogantly in front of you, you may also feel uncomfortable. In such situations, you may act arrogantly toward them as well. As a result, both parties ignore each other, thinking, if you look down upon me, I will look down upon you even more. Chinese people often have this mentality. There are many such phenomena in our spiritual practice community, though we may not explicitly point them out. If you ignore me, I will ignore you. This shows that they look down upon each other and lack harmony. If there are grudges among each other, such a group is not a monastic community, and such individuals are not practitioners, but narrow-minded people. As a monastic, if you don't open your heart fully to the monastic community, it indicates you don't have faith in the community and haven't seen yourself as part of it. This is probably due to arrogance or an inferiority complex. In most cases, it is due to your arrogance. Staying away from unqualified teachers those who achieve their livelihood by praising or explaining the benefits of discipline but don't diligently practice it are not suitable to be spiritual teachers. Some individuals don't like to engage in spiritual practice, yet they make a living by praising or explaining the benefits of discipline. As the King of Concentrations Sutra states, in the age of Dharma decline, many monks don't properly observe the precepts. They wish to have extensive knowledge. However, they only praise ethical discipline but don't diligently practice it. The same is stated about concentration, wisdom and liberation in the Sutra. In the age of Dharma decline, Many monks aspire to have extensive knowledge. They learn a lot but don't put it into practice. They cannot uphold the precepts or cultivate concentration. However, the wisdom of actual practice requires both discipline and concentration. Without discipline and concentration, it is not the wisdom of actual practice. Those who extensively learn the threefold training of discipline, concentration and wisdom without practicing it are not qualified spiritual teachers. They just use it as a means of livelihood. The words of my perfect teacher lists four types of unqualified teachers. The teacher like a wooden millstone. What is the use of a wooden millstone? A millstone should be made of stone. A wooden millstone cannot grind anything. It cannot produce grain, only wood powder. The teacher like a frog in a well. A teacher who is like a frog in a well is certainly unqualified. The teacher like a mad guide. They have heavy afflictions and a poor state of mind, but lack mindfulness. They have deeply ingrained anger and jealousy, but lack compassion. However, they act like accomplished practitioners. What they do seems as lofty as the sky. What they say sounds lofty. However, in their daily lives, they easily get angry and have strong jealousy. Such teachers are unqualified. The teacher like a blind guide. 
They are like blind guides teaching the Dharma incorrectly. They don't know how to help disciples make decisions. They only repeat what they have read or heard, like parrots. They don't know what teachings the disciples should listen to and how they should study in the present. The Necessity of Explaining the Qualities The guru who helps you attain liberation is the foundation for fulfilling all your aspirations. Therefore, Anyone who wishes to follow a guru should understand these qualities that a good spiritual teacher should possess and then strive to seek one who has them. Moreover, those who wish to have students should understand these qualities and strive to possess them. This is crucial. If your foundation is too weak, you won't be able to discern. How can you observe these qualities? Hence, it is contradictory. If you haven't practiced and your foundation is weak, you cannot discern. You might mistake the best guru for a bad one and a bad teacher for a good one. This is because people in the age of Dharma decline are attached to external appearances. For example, they might be drawn to the grandeur and magnitude of a temple. The teachers in the age of Dharma decline may be famous, but is their fame genuine? Is this fame the same as brightness? Both are pronounced as Ming in Chinese. It is hard to say. In the age of Dharma decline, Some people create false fame for themselves, so they might be very famous. It is hard to discern in the age of Dharma decline. Therefore, it is essential to have the wisdom to discern. Those who genuinely wish to study the Buddha's teachings can discern. As you are learning, you will know it. You can test a spiritual teacher by observing how they teach you and whether they can promptly address your problems. First and foremost, a good spiritual teacher should be able to resolve the issues you encounter during practice. If you spend several years following someone but only learn superficial recitation and chanting without gaining much insight or making significant progress, you may need to reflect seriously.